Grignard reaction, according to the Wikipedia, is an organometallic chemical reaction where alkyl, vinyl, or aryl magnesium halide, which is a Grignard reagent, adds to the carbonyl group of the aldehyde or ketone. This reaction is extremely useful for formation of carbon-carbon bonds. This reaction was named after the French chemist Victor Grignard, who invented this reaction. Before we start, there are some requirements for a smooth reaction. You should dry all your solvent or reagents that will be used for the reaction. Grignard reagents will be destroyed by the water. And you might be thinking, does drying the liquid mean evaporating that liquid? You're right, but for organic chemistry where you use tons of organic non polar solvents, drying means to get rid of water from that solvent. So back to the topic. You should dry ether that will be used as solvent, your organohalide for making greener reagents, and carbonyl compound that you will react with greener reagents. Seriously, this reaction is really susceptible to water contamination. Last year, I used 2-bromopropane and react with acetone to make 2,3-dimethyl-2-butanol. I didn't dry my acetone properly since I thought, well, my acetone is pretty dry, it was kept in an airtight bottle and stored in the proper chemistry storage. And I failed that experiment miserably. However, I was so stupid last year that I concluded the, that experiment as a success. Well, that's a lot of improvement over the year. So, before I even started my reaction, I dried my ether with anhydrous calcium chloride that was dried in the oven. I also dried benzaldehyde and 1-bromopropane with magnesium sulfate. My plan is to make 1-phenyl-1-butanol by reacting 1-bromopropane with benzaldehyde. First, I put about 8 grams of magnesium metal. I cut the magnesium ribbon into small pieces and put them in the flask. Chopping up your magnesium metal into small pieces better promotes the reaction and it also stores better. We should deal with boiling diet ether in this experiment. So I came up with this setup. On the top of the flask, I connected a glazing adapter where addition funnel and condenser is added. You will see how much vigorous diet ether boils off later in the video. And you should have a cold water recirculator for your condenser, or you will lose all your ether because Grignard reaction is quite exothermic. I didn't have a cold water recirculator at that time, so I came up with another idea. I used dry ice and acetone to cool the running water and fit it into the condenser. This dry ice and acetone ice bed is very useful because the temperature of this bed goes down to minus 78 degrees Celsius. Also, living in a place where hot summer room temperature is enough to boil diet ether, this setup was necessary. So, with everything ready, I add 100 ml of diet ether into the flask. Second, I add all my 1 bromopropane and 50 ml of diet ether into addition funnel. I didn't use the funnel to add 1 bromopropane and some of it got through the pressure equalizing port. My magnesium is kind of oxidized and adding some chips of iodine like 2 or 3 beads can help the reaction to proceed. Actually, there are lots of controversies in online sites like Reddit or ResearchGate whether iodine reacts with magnesium oxide to activate magnesium or iodine just works as a mechanical activator. As I stir the magnesium iodine solvent, the color of diet ether actually went to distinctive brown iodine color to white color and it could mean it actually formed magnesium iodide which has white color. But magnesium oxide also has a white color, so I can conclude that magnesium oxide reacts with iodine. However, during and after the whole Grignard reaction, when I checked the reaction flask and on the magnesium, it had a lot of black layers. And actually, there was more black layers on the magnesium than on the magnesium ribbon that I initially added into the flask. For these reasons, I think the magnesium oxide doesn't react with iodine. 
Iodine just works as a magnesium activator that reacts with metal magnesium and creates little holes that increase the surface area and help the organohalide to start the reaction. So back to the experiment, with vigorous stirring, first you should add small amounts, about 5 ml of 1 bromopropane and ether mixture. When you add too much, this happens. Adding too much at first will make your reaction go through thermal runaway, where there is positive loops of the reaction, ruining the whole process. Actually, I exceeded the cooling ability of my condenser and some ether escaped. When you lose too much ether, just add more ether. What we are creating is the magnesium reacts with bromoalkane, in this case, 1 bromopropane to make propane magnesium bromide. This is Grignard reagent. After all the addition, stir it for additional 15 minutes. When everything is added, I pour 50 ml of benzaldehyde and 100 ml of diethyl into the addition funnel. Add benzaldehyde and diethyl mixture dropwise. Here, with only small amounts, the reaction is pretty vigorous. After all the addition, mix it for additional 15 minutes. What we are doing in here is we react carbonyl containing compound with Grignard reagents to create new carbon-carbon bond. The reaction is shown above. Magnesium acts as a Lewis acid and reacts with basic oxygen to the carbonyl group and creates a coordinate bond between oxygen and magnesium ion. This makes the carbonyl to be a better electrophile. This carbonyl is then attacked by the alkyl group. This intermediate product is formed and later hydrolyzed to create our 1-phenyl-1-butanol. After the reaction, I fill about 200 ml of ice water and ice into the aluminum flask. With the dry ice and acetone bed that I used earlier, I add my whole mixture into the flask. It's said the overeating is really easy, but with ice water in the early metal flask and ice bath, the reaction was pretty controllable. I swirled around to mix the mixture. You can use a stir bar in here. I titrate the mixture with hydrochloric acid to neutralize and clear up the ether layer. After the ether layer is cleared, I add everything into the separator funnel and above ether layer was collected. The separate ether had kind of yellow to orange tint. I think this happened because I added too much iodide to activate magnesium. It's possible to do some reducing agent washing, like sodium thiosulfate to reduce all the iodine into water soluble iodide salts. But I didn't done it here and done a direct fractional distillation.
The first thing you boil off will be ether. Next will be remaining water and around 165 to 170 degrees Celsius, we collect our 1 phenol 1 butanol. One phenol one butanol has the boiling point of 170 degrees Celsius. We chose way above my measuring range of my digital thermometer. So I use mercury thermometer since normal alcohol thermometers can't measure this kind of high temperature range. It actually had a lot of trace water, so I added anhydrous magnesium sulfate to remove trace water. After 4 days when I checked my alcohol, it had faint yellow color. It could be an iodine contaminant or oxidation of alcohol that has occurred. And that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.